Welcome to worship as we celebrate the third Sunday of Easter. Before we begin worship this morning, we have a short video to watch from the Synod's World Hunger Committee. wonderful video. We will be collecting donations for the Senate World Hunger Appeal between now and May 10th. We will be presenting that at Senate Assembly, which begins on May 10th. So you may write your checks to Emmanuel and in the memo, memo write Senate World Hunger. Our goal is to raise $2,500 this year. So thank you in advance for your great generosity. Let us take a moment of silence to prepare ourselves for worship, to center ourselves in God's love and amazing grace. Alleluia, Christ is risen. Christ is risen indeed, alleluia. Refreshed by the resurrection life we share in Christ, let us give thanks for the gift of baptism. We thank you, O risen Christ, for these waters where you make us new, leading us from death to life, from tears to joy. 
We bless you, risen Christ, that your spirit comes to us in the grace-filled waters of rebirth. Like rains to our thirsty earth, like streams that revive our souls, like cool waters shared with strangers. Breathe your peace on your church when we hide in fear. Clothe us with your mercy and forgiveness. Send us companions on our journey as we share your life. Make us one, risen Christ. Cleanse our hearts, shower us with life. To you be given all praise with the Holy Spirit and the glory of God now and forever. Amen. the grace of our Lord Jesus Christ, the love of God and the communion of the Holy Spirit be with you all and also with you. Let us pray. Holy and righteous God, you are the author of life and you adopt us to be your children. Fill us with your words of life that we may live as witnesses to the resurrection of your Son, Jesus Christ, our Savior and our Lord, who lives and reigns with you and the Holy Spirit, one God, now and forever. Amen. Cross the barren desert, but you shall not die of thirst. You shall wander far in safety, though you do not know the way. You will speak your word in foreign lands, all will understand. You shall see the face of God and live.
me not afraid I go before you always Come follow me And I will give you First lesson today is from Acts chapter 3, verses 12 through 19. When Peter saw it, he addressed the people, You Israelites, why do you wonder at this, or why do you stare at us? As though by our own power or piety we had made him walk. The God of Abraham, the God of Isaac, and the God of Jacob, the God of our ancestors, has glorified his servant Jesus, whom you handed over and rejected in the presence of Pilate though he had decided to release him. But you rejected the Holy and Righteous One and asked to have a murderer given to you, and you killed the author of life, whom God raised from the dead. To this we are witness, and by faith in his name, his name itself has made this man strong, whom you see and know, and the faith that is through Jesus has given him his perfect health in the presence of all of you. And now, friends, I know that you acted in ignorance, as did also your rulers. In this way, God fulfilled what he had foretold through all the prophets, that his Messiah would suffer. Repent, therefore, and turn to God, so that your sins may be wiped out. The word of the Lord. Thanks be to God. The psalm today is Psalm 4. Answer me when I call, O God of my right. You gave me room when I was in distress. Be gracious to me and hear my prayer. How long, you people, shall, honor, shall my honor suffer shame? How long will you love vain words and seek after lies? But know that the Lord has set apart the faithful for himself. The Lord hears when I call to him. When you are disturbed, do not sin. Ponder it on your beds and be silent. Offer right sacrifices and put your trust in the Lord. There are many who say, Oh, that we might see some good. Let the light of your face shine on us, O Lord. You have put gladness in my heart more than when their grain and wine abound. I will both lie down and sleep in peace. For you alone, O Lord, make me lie down in safety. The second lesson today is from 1 John chapter 3, verses 1 through 7. See what love the Father has given us, that we should be called children of God, and that his are what we are. The reason the world does not know us is that it did not know him. Beloved, we are God's children now. What we will be has not yet been revealed. What we do know is this, when he is revealed, we will be like him, for we will see him as he is, and all, who gave, and all who have this hope in him purify themselves, just as he is pure. Everyone who commits sin is guilty of lawlessness. Sin is lawlessness. You know that he has revealed to take away sins, and in him there is no sin. No one who abides in him sins, no one who sins has either seen him or known him. Little children, let no one deceive you. Everyone who does what is right is righteous, just as he is righteous. The word of the Lord. Thanks be to God. The Gospel of our Lord according to Luke chapter 24, verse 36b through 48. Glory to you, O Lord. Jesus himself stood among them and said to them, Peace be with you. They were startled and terrified and thought that they were seeing a ghost. He said to them, Why are you afraid? And why do doubts arise in your hearts? Look at my hands and my feet. See that it is I. 
touch me and see. For a ghost does not have flesh and bones, as you see that I have. And when he had said this, he showed them his hands and his feet. Well, in their joy, they were disbelieving and still wondering. He said to them, Have you anything to eat? They gave him a piece of broiled fish, and he took it and ate it in their presence. Then he said to them, These are my words that I spoke to you while I was still with you, that everything written about me in the law of Moses, the prophets, and the Psalms must be fulfilled. Then he opened their minds to understand the scriptures. And he said to them, Thus it is written that the Messiah is to suffer and to rise from the dead on the third day, and that repentance and forgiveness of sins is to be proclaimed in the name to all nations, beginning from Jerusalem. You are witnesses of these things. The Gospel of the Lord. Praise to you, O Christ. Let us pray. Gracious God, let the words of my mouth and the meditation of all our hearts be acceptable to you. Fill us with the words of life and remind us that you are always with us, giving us hope through your Son, Jesus Christ, our Savior and our Lord. Amen. Today, we celebrate the third Sunday of Easter and are reminded of our baptism once again. In Jin Young Choi's commentary in Working Preacher, she writes, After Jesus' death and resurrection, early Christians struggled to understand when and whether Jesus would return, and how to live in the in-between time during his absence. I believe we ask the same question today. How do we live in this in-between time when we have not yet seen the second coming of Christ, when we have not yet been risen ourselves? In what sense does Jesus' ascension become a reality for us today? In Luke's Gospel, Jesus appears in the flesh, and Luke stresses the physical reality of the resurrection. Jesus' resurrected body has flesh and bones. The disciples see Jesus but thinks he's a ghost because they watched him die on the cross. Jesus tries to comfort them, tell them not to be afraid, and ask, why do doubts arise in your hearts? But wouldn't doubts arise in our hearts as well if we saw our dead friend walking among us? In their disbelief and wondering, Jesus asked them for something to eat. They give him a piece of fish, and Jesus took it and ate it in their presence, probably trying to convince them that a ghost could not physically eat something. But still disbelieving, Jesus tries another approach with them. He spoke the words to them that he spoke when he was still with them. And then he opened their minds to understand the scriptures. Jesus is in their midst. He is not absent. And he is not absent to us today either. He is living among us in our midst. Jesus' resurrection is a reality 
And we hear it each Sunday after Easter. He is risen. He is risen indeed. Alleluia. The mystery of the kingdom of God is at work in this world today. Jesus is with us now. And we know this because through reading the scriptures, Jesus has told us. Can we believe it in our hearts? If we believe we live in the in-between times, between the resurrection and the ascension, then the kingdom of God is denied. It is something that we feel is out of our reach. Living in the in-between times is part of the loneliness and the alienation for the modern Christian. Things are merely just things. There is an anxiety that accompanies all of this that is marked with doubt and argument and disbelief. If we think we are living in the in-between times, then our faith is directed toward things past or things that have not yet happened. This understanding stands in sharp contrast to St. Paul's statement in Hebrews. For faith is the substance of things hoped for, the evidence of things not seen. The relationship of faith with things hoped for and not seen is more than a trust that they will be, more than a longing for what is not. Faith is the very substance of such things. Faith is believing that Jesus is in our midst now because he tells us he is. The kingdom of God is upon us now, not in some distant past or in the future. In the Gospel of Luke that we read today, we hear that Jesus is in their midst. And Jesus passes the peace. Jesus eats before them and reminds them of his teaching in his earthly life. Everything written about him in the scriptures has been fulfilled in his death and in his resurrection. The disciples' eyes are open in the communion with Jesus. And in their minds, as their minds were opened, his teachings of scriptures became apparent and clear to them. Let our eyes now be open to. Jin Young Choi continues in her commentary, the post-resurrection reality is not confined to the locked down room. Jesus' followers do not remain sad or in sorrow, but are filled with joy and become witnesses to this great story. Touching and seeing Jesus' wounds in his hands and feet does not just invoke trauma, but demonstrates that as the resurrection reality is touchable, God is reachable also. Jesus lifts his wounded hands to bless his followers, women and men and children, to be witnesses to how they experience the resurrection today. Let us, as followers of Christ, be rooted in our faith and be witnesses to what we believe. Let the scriptures transform our hearts and our minds. Let us not live in the in-between times, but live in the kingdom of God that is with us now, in this life and forevermore. Let us not be afraid. Let us go out and share this good news with all people. Amen.
for food. Many are hungry, longing for water. Many still thirst. Make us your bread, broken for others, shared until all are full. Christ, be our light, shine in our hearts, shine through the darkness. Christ, be our light, shine in your church, gather today. continues with professing our faith using the words of the Nicene Creed. We believe in one God, the Father, the Almighty, maker of heaven and earth, of all that is seen and unseen. We believe in one Lord Jesus Christ, the only Son of God, eternally begotten of the Father, God from God, light from light, true God from true God, begotten not made, of one being with the Father, through whom all things were made. For us and for our salvation, he came down from heaven, was incarnate of the Holy Spirit and the Virgin Mary, and became truly human. For our sake, he was crucified under Pontius Pilate. He suffered death and was buried. On the third day, he rose again in accordance with the scriptures. He ascended into heaven and is seated at the right hand of the Father. He will come again in glory to judge the living and the dead, and his kingdom will have no end. We believe in the Holy Spirit, the Lord, the giver of life, who proceeds from the Father and the Son, who with the Father and the Son is worshipped and glorified, who has spoken through the prophets. We believe in one holy Catholic and apostolic church. We acknowledge one baptism for the forgiveness of sins. We look for the resurrection of the dead and the life of the world to come. Amen. Alive in the risen Christ, by the power of the Holy Spirit, we bring our prayers before God who promises to hear us and answer us in steadfast love. Each prayer will end, hear us, O God, and our response is your mercy is great. Living God, in the midst of Easter joy, we are still filled with questions and with wonder. Open our hearts and minds as we encounter the scriptures so that the church embodies repentance and forgiveness in the name of Jesus to all nations. Hear us, O oh God. Your mercy is great. Creating God like a master artist, you have fashioned the universe out of your love and delight. Heal your creation where it is in need of restoration. 
provide all the inhabitants of earth a peaceful and sustainable home. Remind us that you created us to care for all that has been given us. May we make right decisions so our children and grandchildren will have a healthy place to live and enough resources for generations to come. Hear us, O oh God. Your mercy is great. God of all, the nations hunger and thirst for your righteousness. Many call on you for guidance and strength. Answer their hopes with the peace of Christ and give your loving kindness to national, state, and local leaders of our people. Guide President Biden and Vice President Harris as they make decisions regarding the 20,000 displaced children at our borders. Hear us, O oh God. Your mercy is great. Healing God, you hear the cries of those in need and answer them in their distress. Grant to those who are sick and suffering your compassion and nurse them back to health and wholeness. Be close to the hearts of the lonely. Hear us, O oh God. Your mercy is great. You are a loving parent, O oh God. You have given us such love that we should be called the children of God. Reveal yourself to us so that we in this community of faith will become more and more like you in our mutual love and bold witness. Hear us, O oh God. Your mercy is great. God of all times and in all ages, those who have died in you now see you as you are. We thank you for their lives among us. Assure us of the peace you have promised, that we may join them in everlasting life. Hear us, O oh God. Your mercy is great. In the hope of new life in Christ, O oh Lord, we raise our prayers to you, spoken and unspoken, trusting in your never-ending goodness and mercy. Through Jesus Christ, our Lord. Amen. The peace of our Lord Jesus Christ be with you always and also with you. a sacramental prayer until we can meet again as the whole body of Christ, break the one bread and share the one cup. I invite us to pray this prayer. Let us pray. Lord Jesus Christ, you are the bread of life that nourishes and sustains us. Since we cannot gather to share the bread and the cup, dwell in our hearts. Reveal to us again that we are the body of Christ in our vulnerable flesh through our baptism into your death and resurrection and in service to the world you love. Be for us manna in the wilderness. Open our eyes to see you present in every meal and in all who hunger for bread, for human touch, for justice, for love, and for healing and hope. We pray in your name, our healer and our companion. Amen. Gathered into one with the Holy Spirit, let us pray as Jesus taught us. Our Father, who art in heaven, hallowed be thy name. Thy kingdom come, thy will be done on earth as it is in heaven. Give us this day our daily bread and forgive us our trespasses, as we forgive those who trespass against us. And lead us not into temptation, but deliver us from evil. For thine is the kingdom, and the power, and the glory, forever and ever. Amen. Receive the blessing. 
May our glorious God grant you a spirit of wisdom to know and to love the risen Jesus Christ. The love of God, Father, Son, and Holy Spirit bless you now and forever. Amen. Alleluia, Christ is risen. Christ is risen indeed, alleluia. Go in peace. Share the good news. Alleluia. Thanks be to God. Alleluia.